Hello everybody, Steve Hudson here. Today we're going to talk about the Cisco Virtual Internet Routing Lab. We're going to install this using the VMware vSphere client, the native Windows client. Now a little bit about Cisco Viral. Cisco Viral is a network simulation platform that allows you to emulate some of Cisco's network operating systems, including iOS, iOS XE, XR, and XOS. Now you'll get Cisco Viral by purchasing it from Cisco at this link here, viral.cisco.com, or you can go to viral-dev-innovate.cisco.com and click on the purchase link there, which will take you to viral.cisco.com. So, let's get started on the install. Okay, since we're going to be using vSphere client, we'll go to viral-dev-innovate.cisco.com and click on the install link and choose the vSphere client instructions. So, first part of the instructions is going to be the minimum requirements. If it'll load. There we go. Alright, so a minimum of two vCPU cores and four gigabytes of RAM is going to be required. Um, that's probably not going to do very well as far as performance or scalability for your deployment. So Cisco recommends using four CPUs and 8 gig of RAM. Uh, each installation, regardless of these, is going to require 50 gigabytes of free space on a data store, and you'll need an Intel CPU with VTX and extended page tables uh, present and enabled in the BIOS. Now, if you need to know whether or not your CPU will support that, you can just go to the ARC, Intel ARC. So we'll go there. I've already looked up my processor. I have a E5 2620 and down here under advanced technologies I can see that I support VTX and extend page tables. So AMD C uh, CPUs are not supported at this time uh, due to various problems that they've seen. So once you decide to purchase Viral, they're going to send you a link and you can download the OVA. Now I would recommend using the download manager because it was kind of a slow download. I guess they're limiting the bandwidth. Um, and once you get the OVA, we're going to go ahead and begin the configuration. So let's get started on that. First step is to create the virtual networks. So we'll go ahead and go to the vSphere client for that. Okay, so once you have the vSphere client up and loaded and you're connected to your server, we're going to go to the configuration tab and then networking. Now we're going to be creating four additional port groups. So to do that, we'll click on add networking virtual machine connection type and we're going to use vSwitch 0 since we already have a uh, NIC adapter assigned to it. Alright, the first one we're going to create is called flat and it's going to leave that default and finish. So what that does is creates a port group here. Now we're going to do that for the other remaining four, or sorry, three networks. Okay, so once you have all of the networks created, flat, flat one, snat, and internal, we need to go in and edit flat one and flat uh, to allow for promiscuous mode. So we'll click on properties, select flat, edit. security and accept promiscuous mode. 
We'll do the same for flat one. And close the dialog. Okay, at this time we are now ready to deploy the OVA. So what we'll do is go to File, Deploy OVF. We're going to browse and locate the OVA I have here. Next. Now I'm not going to put a description. I'm going to leave the default name, choose my data center, choose my data store, thick revision, and my networks will map correctly since they are named correctly. If you name them something else, you would have to choose from the drop down box to match them. But we'll leave them as is and finish. Now this could take a few minutes so I will pause the video. Okay now that we're done with the deployment we're going to need to edit the VMX file to enable nested virtualization. So what we'll do is we go back to our host, configuration, storage, we're going to browse to the data store where we saved our virtual machine. Okay, so we'll locate the folder that we saved it in. Choose the file. Right click and download. I'm just going to download it to my desktop. Okay, close that. Now, what we'll need to do is open it up in WordPad. Okay, so in here we're going to edit this file. We're going to put in our number of CPUs. So we're going to be looking for num v CPUs right here. All right, so it's already four. So that's good for me. Now our memory size, I'm going to change that. I'm going to give it 32 gigabytes. So 32, 7, 6, 8. Now, of course, you will need to adjust to your platform. All right. So at the very bottom of this file, we're going to add a couple of lines. We're going to add vhv.enable equals true. We're going to add usb.generic allow hid equal true and usb.generic equal true. Now we'll also need to change the virtual hardware version to nine. It's already that it's already nine, so we'll leave it as is. Okay, so we're gonna save that. Close and we'll go back to our client. Okay, now we'll need to go back, browse the data store. Open up. We're going to upload file here. 
We're going to upload the VMX we just edited. Okay. So it looks good. All right. And that's all we need to do to enable nested virtualization. Okay, now we're ready to power on our virtual machine. Get it started. What we're going to do next is set the network, the static network IP addressing. We will let the machine start all the way up and then we're going to log in. Okay, our virtual machine is now powered up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and log in. We use the default password of viral, all caps, V-I-R-L. Okay, once we're logged in, we're going to open up the terminal. Okay, so we're going to change directory, Etsy, network. All right, we're going to perform pseudo nano interfaces. Okay, in this file, we're going to need to change eth0 to static. We'll give it an address. And a gateway. Okay, control X. Yes, I want to save. And enter. Okay, now we'll need to reboot the virtual machine. Choose sudo reboot now. Now this should make those IP address settings take effect. Okay, and we're back. I've already logged back in, so we just need to verify a couple things. So let's verify that my processor is compatible. sudo kvm dash ok. Alright, so my processor is good. KVM accelerations can be used. Alright, so let's verify network connectivity. And it looks like we're going to be good on that. Okay, let's go in and set our network time protocol settings up. So to do that, we're going to issue sudo nano etsy ntp.conf. Okay, in here, we'll change these servers to 0.2 and we'll do that for each one for one dot two dot pool two dot two dot pool and three dot two dot pool okay so we'll save that yes enter Alright, so we need to stop the NTP service, sudo service NTP stop, okay, done. Now we'll set the time, sudo ntpd dash gq. Good to go. Now we'll start the NTP service, sudo service NTP start. Okay, so it'll take around 90 seconds and we should get some associations and we will check that in a moment with NTP query. Okay, it's been a few minutes, so let's check and see if we have any NTP peers.
and we do. And let's check the jitter. And offset looks pretty good, so we're all right. Okay, that about does it for my video on the installation phase. Um, I will be creating a couple more videos here in the future. We'll be setting up VM Maestro and actually activating Cisco Viral in those future videos. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.